Frank Worth Designer Con. Designer Con. Designer Con. Yeah. Uh, you introduced me to this convention last year, <laughs> and I couldn't stop gushing about it. Yeah, it's it, pretty much my second favorite convention of the year behind Dragon Con. Oh my goodness. It's just uh, rooms full of interesting makers, artists, sculptors, yeah. and this year we have a booth. Yeah, we got a, this is the first time we've had a booth at a convention, huh? I think so, at least a convention like this. And you got to bring the Rancor, Creepy Figure here. We have friends from Tested, yep. making stuff, showing stuff. And we're going to introduce you guys to some of the makers in the convention hall uh, and some people that you've been maybe following on Instagram. Yeah, I feel like half of this convention is half of my Instagram feed. Oh all my the God. cool makers, all the little indie toy makers and sculptors and artists, they're pretty much all here. And you get to see their works, their limited edition stuff, mm -hmm. some it works in progress, some prototype things, yeah. and chat with them, yeah. and get to be friends with them. Yeah, there was a guy that I just followed on Instagram like yesterday, came up, showed me a sketchbook. He's an artist that draws for DC and Marvel. I was like, holy shit, I just followed you yesterday. Amazing. It's awesome. Amazing. So we're going to go inside, Frank's going to chat with some artists, and we have a ton of videos from the show, so stay tuned on Tested. See you guys in a bit. Here we are. We're with Melly from MissMonster.com. Um, you've seen us paint some of her kits on Tested, and now we're here at her booth here at DesignerCon. Mm -hmm. um, now, I love, 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 love. Thank you. All your, your mask, helmet things that are Thank going on. Thank you. You saw the jaw, right, that it opens? Oh, oh that's so yeah. great. Yeah, so you can talk with it. Now, what, what's your whole process like with something like this? Like sculpting a little kit, making a mold, like that, people can, can kind of get that, but yeah. this is Yeah, bigger. this guy I had to sculpt in one big piece, mm -hmm. but the ears off, of course. So I sculpted in one big piece with wax clay, and um, then you make a junk mold, you do your junk cast. Like a, like a silicone mold? Yeah. yeah. And then you can get in there and cast your urethane piece. You cut the jaw out, mm -hmm. sand everything down, sand, sand, sand until you want to die. And then you make another mold with the both pieces and make sure everything fits together. And then, um, and so you rotocast that. Yeah. I do the slush casting with that. But eventually, once I do production, I'll make a plug method mold so that I can pour the stuff in. <clears throat> plug in and you're done. So you're not sitting there babysitting a mold oh, so, forever and ever. So these molds have plugs, plugs. in them. You don't roto every single secret. one? That's secret. No. Awesome. Oh no, 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 no. Because wow. you're sitting there inhaling this fume and just going, why, why? Well oh, then you get the big God. arm muscles. Yeah, well, kind of. I have little burn arms. But <laughs> this way, uh, you know, when I'm doing like a run of like, let's say a hundred, yeah. you've got to make it. How do you get go. a mold to, to last 100 castings? Like, well, usually they burn molds, up. Okay. Two molds going at once. All right. Yes, yes. So I have my assistant, so he's pouring, I'm pouring, I'm cleaning, I'm doing It's always making the most use of your time, but yeah. Is it tricky trying to get the symmetry on these oh, larger things? Oh, my God. Yeah, it is a nightmare. It's um, one of my friends taught me a method where she, she'll sculpt like one half, and then you kind of go and sculpt the entire other half, because mm -hmm. then you can sort of measure. Do you use like a mirror things. at all when you're doing that? I've heard or? that that's a good method. I haven't tried it yet. Uh, I usually getting like a second pair of eyes to come in once I start doing more detail stuff. That helps a lot, because when you're staring at it forever, everything looks fine. Yeah. But then as soon as you like change your perspective a little bit, and I notice how far the eyes are off, I just, oh my god. Oh. So yeah, having somebody else check your work really helps a lot. That's and I so should probably do the mirror method too. Um, well, I really love like your whole style. Like, Thank you. I think of it as kind of like biomechanical. Is that what you yeah, would kind of sure. we'll like? How would that. you? Well, how yeah. would you classify it? Like, uh, yeah, like biomechanical cyborg uh, automaton, but sort of futuristic, but sort of clunky yeah. in a way. Like uh, what people in the '60s might think is the future, or a lot of uh, cyberpunk sort of battle angel Alita mm -hmm. was a lot of. You can see like the little. These little um, circles you see yeah. in like that art a lot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was a huge influence. Um, Zeram, have you ever seen that movie? No, no. Oh my god, it's amazing. All right, I'll just look like it's up. sort of organic, but not quite. So yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I love all the all the helmets that you did, and Thank you. those things have inspired some toy company collaborations. Yes. Now you're making some six scale stuff. Yes. So these guys are my own customs that I built yeah. off of just pre-existing one six bodies. Mm -hmm. But I worked with Glitch Network, uh, who saw one of my helmets, and they said, "Hey." Which happens to be my favorite one, and yes. I want one so bad. Yes. Yes. I have I have the master cast for you. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, they approached me and they said, "Hey, do you want to make a toy?" And I went, "Yeah." And they were really easy to work with. I sent them some sketches for the outfit, and they did everything. And they made an amazing um, factory-produced figure of mine, which I wish I had brought now, of yeah. course. Yeah. Oops. 
Um, and actually, we're coming out with another one. You know the panther mask yeah. that I have? Yeah. We're doing a bad guy Oh, that's figure. so great. And I designed these really big claws for him, like big claw hands. He's all mean looking. So he'll be coming out. We'll pre-order in yeah. a few months, I think. So That's really great. Excited. And will that be with Glitch also? Yes, that will be with Glitch. Great. But yeah, these guys I do in my own studio. Like I said, I use pre-existing bodies, mm -hmm. customize the clothes. You, it's like GI Joe. You, you buy the clothes? And then I you buy the clothes. Gotcha. I do but not. Sewing clothes at that <laughs> scale is tricky. Oh, people are like, oh my God, your stitches are so good. I'm like, no, they're not. I bought that. I did not <laughs> I did not stitch that. So you buy your blanks and you can dye them. You can customize them. I put little lights and things on them. Yeah. H1 has a, in their backpack, they've got a little prize inside. What's the prize going to be? <gasps> is it different it's every time? It's a little time? crystal. Oh, yeah. You've got all these really great little crystals. Yeah. You were telling me before yeah. that you're you're casting these with some, some plastics in them so that they kind of reflect yeah, the light. Yeah, really I neat. use... Uh, what was it? The packing cellophane, that iridescent packing cellophane. And yeah. you just crinkle it up and just cut it up. And throw it in the mold. Throw it in there. I'm giving all my secrets away. But uh, yeah, you get a really cool effect. A it's little so glittery great. stuff. Yeah, it's really fun. Cool. Yeah. Well, um, I can't wait till I can get my hands on some of your stuff and soon. paint some more. Soon, we'll probably soon. be painting more of her stuff on Tested. Yes. So. Yes, I have all kinds of things for you. Great. Yay. That's awesome. Well, thanks. You're very welcome. <laughs>